one that it's not your typical slave. He is one that is that is there, but he's not necessarily being forced to be there. And the thing that Paul says, he says, those that are bond servants, those that are there as slaves, count your master, those who you're under, worthy of all honor. And what does that mean when you honor someone? That it means you're faithful to that person. That means you do your duty as you are told to do it. You do all the instructions that were given to you to do. And you do them faithfully, respecting, looking after the reputation of this individual. And here he's speaking to those that are in lowly places. And even though slavery, thank God, is not something that exists in the United States, which it still exists in other parts of the world, it can still be applied to those who work in a specific place. Their masters could be the boss, could be your employer. It can be the person that hired you, the person you work for. They're the ones that have given you a job so that you can provide for your family. And we are to show honor to those individuals. It doesn't matter if our boss is a wicked individual. It doesn't matter if they're an adulterer. It doesn't matter if they're homosexual. It doesn't matter if they're sexually immoral. It doesn't matter if they're atheists. It doesn't matter what they are. We are to honor them. And he says, why? Why is it that we are to honor those that are above us? He says that the name of God and his doctrine may not be blasphemed. We looked at the name Timothy. The name Timothy means one who honors God. And this is the point of where Paul is speaking about. Because when it all comes down to, is all about God's honor. It's not for the sake of the man, but it's for the sake of who we proclaim to be, of whose we proclaim to be, that we belong to God, that we are Christians, and that our God is real and that he's really changed us and transformed us. Therefore, we honor those that are in position above us and have authority over us. We see that there's a portion of Scripture where Paul tells the the woman if she has an unbelieving husband to submit to him submit to your husband just because a person is not a christian and they have authority over us doesn't mean that we should disrespect them of course if they tell us to do something that is contrary to the word of god because we honor god first and we will disobey but as far as our testimony goes We are to honor God by honoring men. Because men also are made in the image of God. We respect life because we honor God. And he says that the name of God and his doctrine be not blasphemed. And unfortunately, we live in a time when the name of God and his doctrine, his instruction is blasphemed, especially here in the United States. It's a joke to talk about God to some people. And it has a lot to do because of the testimony that many of us Christians have given to the world. The hypocrisy that they've seen in our lives has caused the world to blaspheme the name of God and His Word. What is His doctrine? His Word. The gospel. Another version says, this will prevent the name of God and Christian teaching from being discredited. That's what another version says, from being discredited. We live in a time where Christianity is discredited here in the United States. And what's going to change that, it's not necessarily by people seeing miracle signs and wonders, but do they see that we actually believe it? And live it out. Because we look at, we look at some of these, um, ministers that are in public ministry. 
And a lot of these individuals move in supernatural, but yet the world still sees through them because they're greedy. And the fact that they're greedy circumvents whatever proof that may come from that supernatural experience. He says, count your masters deserving of full respect. Full respect. We are to respect those that have authority over us because we honor God and we honor his word and we desire to represent him the best that we can. Amen. Here's a beautiful illustration of a worldly man and a godly man. Like my brother Javer said, chapter 6 starts out by showing us an illustration of a master who is a worldly man. And it's showing us or telling us that we are to show respect to that man's authority or to that leader's authority over us. This can apply to anything or anyone that would be in a role of leadership. Now, the second part is speaking to the Christian. And that's when it says, So that God's name and our teaching may not be slandered. And I mentioned this before in different shows. And this is our testimony. Because our testimony speaks a lot to worldly people. You know, one of the bad or the worst things that could happen is when our testimony is destroyed because of the way we act in our work environment or with our leaders. We have many rebellious people, unfortunately, and some of these are Christian. And what happens is that a lot of these Christians who are people who speak negative things about their leader and refuse to submit the, to their authority and are backstabbers and hurtful and then yet say they're Christian destroys all the testimony of Christ because of the way they live. You know, we got to understand that Worldly people look at us at examples. They don't look at Christ because they don't know Christ. So they, they look at us as examples of who Christ is. And if we're crooks, we're liars, we're backstabbers, and we don't accept correction, then that's what they see in a godly man or a woman. And verse 2 says, And those who have believing masters, let them not despise them because they are brethren, but rather serve them because those who are benefited are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. And I like what the NET says. It says, But those who have believing masters must not show them less respect because they are brothers. Instead, they are to serve all the more. Because those who benefit from their service are believers and dearly loved, teach them and exhort them about these things. So in the first verse, Paul speaks about those who have unbelieving masters, to give them all due respect. And in the second verse, he says, to those who have masters that are Christians, to those that have authority over them that are brothers in the faith. And he says, because they're brothers, they should not show them any less respect, but all the more to serve them because they're a brother. And this is something that's very important. Because sometimes, because we have a brother and sister in the faith, we feel like we can let them down easier than others. Because we say, oh, well, they're understand, they're forgiving, they're a Christian. However, this is not the attitude 
that we see that a Christian should have towards another brother and sister. We are to show more honor and more respect to our brothers, even more so than people of the world, because they are also partakers of the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. One of the things that Jesus speaks about when they came to him, telling him that his mother and sister and his family was looking for him, and he said, my family are those who do the will of God. We have we see that Jesus gave more honor to the family of God than even to his physical family. And in that sense, we should strive more in following through our commitments that we have with one another, even more so than in other relationships that we have. He says, but rather serve them because those who are benefited or those who are faithful and beloved, because they are faithful and beloved. They're not just doing it because if you have a boss as a Christian, if you have someone over you that's a Christian, you're not there serving him now just because you're getting a paycheck, but you're doing it because they have been faithful to the truth and because you love them as a brother. See, the, the, the first time he says, show honor respectful to your master because of the name of God, because of your testimony. And the second one is because you love them. Because you love them, because you both love God. See, the, the Bible says that we as Christians, we're one body. One of the things that is so important, that is in, a, in fact a sign that a person is saved is that they love the brethren. They love the body of Christ. In fact, John tells us in the book of 1 John, I believe, that if we despise our brother, we cannot say we love God. We're liars because if we don't love our brother that we can see, how can we love God that we cannot see? So there's a, a special correlation between the love that we have for our brother with the love that we have for God. You can't say you love God if you don't love your brother. If you tell your brother, you give him a word, you you, you tell him that there's something, uh, you're going to help them out in some situation and you don't follow through. We can't, especially with the family of God, we have to honor each other and love each other because we're a family. It doesn't matter what position you have. Every single position, every single member in the body of Jesus Christ is important. It's like saying, you know, um, any part of your body is disposable. Like you can cut it off. You wouldn't, nobody would say that. Nobody would say, well, I can do without my pinky. I can do without my little toe. Every part of the body is important. There's no part of Jesus Christ that's not important. There's no member in the body of Christ that is disposable. And one of the beautiful things about the Holy Spirit is that when you come across another individual, perhaps you've never spoken to that person before, but you, you meet them and you realize they're a believer and there's this special connection that you have with that person that even though you've never really known them, but yet there's something special that attracts you, that fills you with joy just to be able to fellowship with that individual. It's a, it's a, the Bible tells us that we have a fellowship in the spirit. There's a, a fellowship, there's a communion that comes from having the Holy Spirit in us that when two believers come together, something special happens. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important to congregate, especially in these days. I know that we say that a lot, or I specifically mention that a lot about congregating because it's so important. So many times in my life that I've been drained out, discouraged, and there's something so special about just coming in with brothers and sisters, praying for one another, that is so powerful and uplifting. 